if you guys understand the wholesale model on how to find deals like I showed you, you literally can start building generational wealth, right? So if you keep finding these thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar deals or whatever is cheap to people in their region, now you can start wholesaling to yourself. Look, are you a coach, a consultant, a service provider, or a course creator? Listen, you want your clients to pay you three thousand to ten thousand dollars for your program. You want to stop nickel and diamond. You want three to ten thousand dollar clients. Listen, I got a special gift for you. Okay, this is from my friend, my buddy, and a coach of mine. He helped me make thirty thousand dollars in a week. My first time making thirty thousand dollars in a week. I had six five k clients. Okay, he helped me. Listen, it works even if you don't have a big following. As a result, his program has accumulated $250 million in revenue for his clients. Do you want part of that? Listen, it's a personal endorsement from my boy, no cap. I'll show you the receipts. You get free access. Go to socialproofgift.com or text PROOF to 904-447-5274. All right, let's get into the episode. When I go home, over. Oh, it's over. You said what? I did a mini series, something like this, on real estate. We was doing four a day, back to back days. Yeah. That, that was. That was. I was draining, bro. That was a lot. Was Trying to keep the same energy so everybody yeah. don't know it's the same day. Yeah, but like, the difference is, I really. I'm really intrigued. Like, mm-hmm. I really, really You look like this. you really trying to figure something yeah, 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 out. Yeah, like, 100%. Slide up a little bit. So we're on the same plane. There we go. Up. Oh, all right. So. What you mean? What you mean? That's light. That's light. I can't. I, yo, know, I, I told Neil my uh, my max for a month. He was like, oh, that's good. Let's go to the next level. Mm. He ain't give me no, no, yo, that's what's up. None of that. He's like, oh, word. All right, bet. That's how hurt hurt people hurt people, baby. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Toxicity travels. Uh What you mean? Huh? Um, Yes, but I don't know when. I just don't know when. So, you ready? Yeah, we good to go. All right, no worries, no worries. You ready, Joey? All right, quiet on set, no side conversations. Thank you. Love y'all. Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast, where we find dope people that did dope stuff. I'm pretty excited about this podcast, too, man, uh, because you're a young man. How old are you? 27. 27 years old. Um, got into an industry and made half a million dollars in two years. That's cool. And the funny thing about it is, like, being 20, I got in a couple years ago. So doing it, doing it kind of fast is what blew people's minds. And also, like, the beer and everything, that's kind of new. So that's when it really threw them off. The beard like, is new? Yeah, it wouldn't grow. Like, I had, like, <laughs> Hold on. I, had, I had, like, this 5 o'clock shadow kind of thing. But it just, it wasn't really. So people, when I first got started, right, people would look at me and, like, yo, I he's young. Like, he's literally young. So that was my biggest problem. Nobody ever wanted to take me serious in a real estate. You got to think about somebody's house. That's the biggest investment in somebody's life. Yeah. Like, his house and his car. Anything beyond that is like the one percenters. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. So somebody's like, I don't want to put this type of thing in your hands. I already know you 20-something. And then you kind of, on top of it, you got the young look. It was throwing people off. So it was kind of hard in the beginning. Not hard. I just always, so thank God I had like the gift of gab. So I always had to talk a little bit more. You know how some people, they look old, they just walking as a rat. Mm-hmm. But for me, I had to kind of like, yo, look, this is what we can do. I had to really kind of sell it. But it actually turned into a skill for me, so it worked out either way. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Okay, but back to the beard thing, because I'm struggling. <laughs> so, how do you do that? Because I've never had a, I never had a beard. I mean, I, you, see, you see what's going on. But it, it ain't, it never looked like that, ever. So, what did I do? It kind of just started, like, I think I just got serious and just started growing out of nowhere. And then I started using, um, I started combing it. And uh, I started using, like, this, like, this beer butter. Uh, you know, uh, one of my friends named P. Michael, right? No, P. He, he gave me this beer butter. I just was trying everybody's stuff. And then one yeah, of them started clicking. My man definitely about to get a free, uh, free advertisement slot right now because... <laughs> 
my joint is a struggle. And it just, it, like, you've always had an issue with your beard and it just finally grew? Man, I got this one spot right here. It finally grew, but it was this hole right here for the longest. Man, anything's possible. <laughs> I just want to, I just want to encourage somebody today. Anything's possible. So, um, Derek Boom out of Philly. Yes, sir. Wholesale, uh, wholesale real estate yep. space. And you had your license before. Yep. So a little bit, just to uh, give you a little background story. I kind of, I called me and I like to do the, the all around real estate. So we kind of do a little bit of everything, right? So when I first got started in 2017, 2017, I had, when I got my license, but the funny thing that a lot of people don't know, I went and got my license. I passed, you know, you got to go to classes like two, three months mm. and you got to take a test. I failed my test nine times. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. And yeah, a lot of people huh? do know that. Yeah, I failed my test nine times. So on the 10th time I passed it, you got to pay. In, in what time period? Is this it? is like, I was going back to back. It's a couple months. So I was going back to you back to back. You just keep taking it? Yeah. What's going through your head the first time you failed? Oh, it was nothing. So I, w- I went in, right? Okay, what about third time? Oh, it was nothing. Six. It's right, something, this, bro. Yeah, no. Because <laughs> you got to pay. Because look, you got to pay $54 every single time. All right. So now I'm like, all right, but you know what it hit me because um, once you got your you got your license, you can go into a brokerage. Mm-hmm. And I on the sixth time, I was like, all right, I'm serious. I'm going to pass this. I wore a suit and everything because I was going to leave there and go straight to mm-hmm. Remax, Keller Williams, Century 21, Berkshire, one of them places. And that's when it hit me. You walking out there with a suit on. Everybody got uh, ball shorts on and things. Mm-hmm. And you're like, man, I'm walking here past it. You didn't. That's when I really took it a little, took, I really started most studying. Most professional boards. Yeah, down, most like. professional person walking in there. <laughs> so that's when I had went ahead and um, started studying. I really started taking it serious. Then I felt again. Then I felt again. And then that's when, like, I don't know what it, what was it about the last time, but it worked out and I passed. And then that's when I went Hold ahead. Hold on. And so, like, time, like, seven you finally decide, I'm going to get serious and study. Were you not studying before? So what the thing is, and this is a gem for anybody that's trying to get their real estate license, right? They, you got to take two tests. You got to take the nationwide and you got to take the state. The state is the one. Mm. The state is hard. The nationwide is like 100 and some questions and the state is like 30 some questions, right? So you're trying to study for both of them things at the same time. You're really wrecking your brain. Some people can do it. You know, great to them. But for a lot of people, I know a lot of people, it doesn't work like that. So what I did was on the ninth, on the eighth time, I focused on passing one and I passed it. Then the next one, I went and just focused on passing one. So I literally passed on eight, I passed the state. On nine, I passed the, uh, on nine, I passed the state. And on 10, I passed the nationwide. But the funny thing is about the test, they ask you like, hey, if you were David walking in the house and the ceiling is leaking, but David didn't sign a contract, but the seller's over there, what do you do? you like... Let David know. Well, no, because you didn't tell it. Y'all didn't sign anything. It's it's funny situations like mm-hmm. that. So every time you think it's something right, it's wrong. But you weren't studying before. I'm sorry. I'm not I was studying, system. but it was like just trying to study the practice test, the in the back of the book questions. But when you mm-hmm. take the test, it's all scenarios. None is everything is a so scenario. You gotta go through the book and really understand the foundation of the question. Boom, and then you can go ahead and answer the scenarios correctly. But when it, that's in the a beginning, gym, bro. Yeah, that's a gem because yeah. that's like it's almost like in entrepreneurship, people they'll go on a webinar and say, "Yo, I got it," or they'll just buy the course and think that you don't have to go out and do anything. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like you don't have like or or I'm just gonna do what it says to do in a course, but mm-hmm. it, yo, you can't cover everything on a course. You, can't. you still gotta like learn the ropes. You gotta figure out the scenarios, Wisdom. the foundation. You got to actually try. Entrepreneurship. Yeah. You feel me? That's a gem. I just learned something. And the, and the crazy thing about it is a lot of people, they want to go ahead and, hey, David has this course. I'm going to buy it. I'm going to be a multimillionaire tomorrow. Right? And But you got to understand some things that you learn in process to be that multimillionaire happens with experience. Like every time in real estate, we're cold calling. We're calling people every day. Every single phone, I can't give you the exact words somebody's going to say on every yeah. phone call. It happens with experience. Then you start getting the feel of it mm-hmm. and the rhythm, rhythm of it. And I can't give you confidence. I can give you some advice to build up your confidence, but I can't give you confidence in a course so mm-hmm. you can be like the expert caller. It happens through experience. And that's, that's what true. a lot of people, you know, try to take from a course, which is kind of like impossible. Man, I want to get you on this podcast, man, because you're young and you got like a, 
a very unique determination. You know what I mean? Like, you are the person that's going to invest in a mastermind. Oh, you? Yeah. So you were talking about, like, yo, up front. I'm like, yo, I just got to find mentorship. I'm with it. Up front. From, so, so one of my friends, he said this to me. He said, I want to fail as fast as possible. I don't know what the hell is he talking about. Fail as fast. He said, because after you fail, you get a lesson. Once you get the lesson, you succeed. So if I figure out how to fail as fast as possible, then the next go around, I'm going to succeed. But a lot of people, they drag things out and they try to take as long as possible to figure things out. And then they end up failing in six months where I failed in one week, but next week is up. Mm. Next week, we're making money. Next week, we're doing amazing things because I took, I jumped right into it and fell right out the gate. Mm. That way, I can next week and nothing but lessons and success and things like that. So a little, cool, little quick thing, right? Me and this guy, me and my friend, we got in real estate at the exact same time, right? I told him, like, bro, you need to get this mentorship, right? I met this guy. He's going to be my mentor. He's going to help me out. He's like, nah, nah, nah. Next thing you know, he's like, yo, how the hell are you 10 deals, 15 deals? How, how the hell are you doing this? I'm like, I went and got that mentorship. I told you, I, I don't blame anybody for trying to figure things out on their own. I don't knock them. Mm. But if you literally can just get mentorship, if it costs, cut the check. Figure out that early on, then you can really kind of fast track a lot of things. So, like I said, we're trying to fail as fast as possible. So, all right, I failed. I, I scrubbed my knee. All right, get up. Which way do I need to walk this time? How do I need to walk this time? So now every day after that, we don't have to worry about it. What did you get from the mentorship? Um, just to just just to get into it, just to go. Because a lot of times, see, the thing is, people get into mentorship. People get into programs, people get into courses, people get into masterminds, looking for this entire big puzzle to be given to them. We all have our own puzzle, right? Mm. But the point of going to masterminds, people going, point of going to conferences, point of going to all these different things to look for your small piece, right? Because yeah. everybody got their puzzle. But if I go to three conferences and I get a one piece from each one, that might be the, literally the piece to help me make $100,000 this month. Mm -hmm. Might be the piece to make you a million dollars this year. Or it might be a piece to make you extra $10,000 that you never thought was even possible. So I go to these mentorships, masterminds, and like case in point, which you just asked me. And I, one of the things that really helped me, and from that point, was that age doesn't matter. Yeah. Because when I first got in, I was like, you know what? Everybody that I'm talking to, nobody my age is really doing exactly what yeah. I was doing at that time. So everybody I was seeking help from was 30 and up. So at that time, I'm 24, 23. So nobody was trying to figure things out like that, right? In my city. Bro, I was an physical. idiot at 23, bro. Yeah. I, had no, I had no... I don't know what I was thinking of at 23. I get that I, a lot. I, definitely not investing in no mentorship or... Yeah, that, nah, that's wild, bro. Yeah, so that's what, that's what, that's what kind of started separating me. So now I started realizing that, yo, the things that you're doing at 30-something, right? And I'm 23, is no different. There's no age group. There's no... It's not like one of the things where you got to be 18 and get involved. It's like, you don't got to be 26 to get involved. You got to be 30 to get involved. So I realized, like, these dudes that's making 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 a month at 30-something, they're literally doing the same thing that I can do. That's when it hit me. So my first mentor, uh, my first mentor, and then it's funny because he ended up telling me, he was like, yo, you just did kind of more deals than I did. Mm. And I'm like, Yo, you just, and we found out we were trying to get the same house. He was like, yo, you just got the same house that I was bidding on. I was trying to get. And I'm like, dang. And then that's when it was that shift. He was like, yo, maybe I need to talk to you now. And that's when it really hit me like, yo, just because somebody's older than you, it doesn't matter that you can't do the exact same thing as they can do and then more. For sure. And then that's when I got the uh, the next mentorship, which was uh, Neo. Yeah. That was like mindset. He was like, one of the things you just said, you start bragging about stuff. And he's like, all right, so what's next? Yeah. That's when I turned up and Notch was like, all right, I got to like, all right, he made $1,000 yesterday. All right, that's cool. But how are you going to do two today? Yeah. Or right, you did $10,000 last month. How are you going to do 20 this month? He yeah, just kept, I it started getting frustrated because I'm like, yo, I can't <laughs> please you. You know what I mean? Right, right, right. But it worked out a good way because now it pushed me. And one of the things I tell people all the time is, don't try to always focus on the people in your circle and your catering. Neil's not in real estate, right? Mm. I mean, he's in real estate in a way, but he's not in real estate like I am. So at that point, I'm like, okay, let me start hanging around other people because everybody in real estate talks about the same thing. They do the same stuff, use the same system, all the same, everything, right? So I went in and started hanging around other people like Neil, Josh, all these other people. And then what I realized was 
the things that they're utilizing can work for my business. Text blasting, you know, email marketing, you know, word and copy, all these different types of things. And I took that back to my business, you know, click the link and all these different types of things. And I started, you know what? Why can't I just text that link and schedule? Why can't I just... I took all that stuff that they were using for an Amazon and all those different types of things like that. And then that's when I put it back into my business. And now everybody that's in real estate with me, they're like, what the hell you learned that right, at? Right, right, right. I'm like, y'all hanging around doing these same groups, talking about how to cold yo, call. I took it over here and they taught me some stuff to f- really figure out how to do this from home. Yeah, yeah. I, I think even in like mentorship, it's not, and just for me, it's not always about what the mentor says. Mm-hmm. It's really the the psychology and the ideology. And if you can adopt the way somebody thinks, you mm-hmm. can have what they have. If you look at um, like successful people, biographies and things like that, you're not watching to get the exact game. You're watching it so you can figure out what their day-to-day is. Yeah. How are they operating? How do they listen to things? How do they look at things? How do they analyze things? And you could bring it back. Now you always tell me all the time, he's like, bro, you literally just ran my play without even telling me. Because you watch, you pay attention, you see things. And I do that with all my mentors and things like that. And that's how I was able to, like, kind of start early. 2017 is 2021. 2017, those three, four years, and really, like, turn it up kind of fast. Wow. So so were you doing well in real estate before you started wholesaling? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Being a So I started out 2017 being a realtor, and we were doing good at that. Like, first year, I got licensed March 2017. By December, I did 16 deals. Then, So people were trying to figure out what the hell were you doing? And I hung around people that weren't in real estate. So I started utilizing things. Like the things I hung that around I, people that weren't in real estate. So mm. people were trying to figure out, like, what are you doing? I was using SMS text, um, SMS blasts. I was using ringless voicemail systems. I was using um, email. I was using social media. They were like, how to, like, yo, I be wholesaling deals from the DMs. Like, literally, it's so funny. Hold on, were you wholesaling? Hold on, were you wholesaling when you got your license initially? Or? So, when I first got started, I was doing real estate deals, like realtor deals, like helping like somebody buy a house, help somebody sell a house. And then, so to give you the full story, right? I got it started there in 2017, right? Then 2018-ish, around that time, I met with my, one of my friends, my, my one of my partners at the time. And he was like, yo, listen, man, I just did a deal that was like 30 grand. And I was like, all right, my deals are like eight, ten thousand dollars each transaction. Being a hold on, realtor. real quick. So first off, you get your real estate license, and then sixteen transactions like house sales, real not wholesaling. Yeah, this is just regular house sales. What was that activity like? What you mean? Like, what were you doing to get? I mean, you had to be out here. Oh, I was working. pumping. I was pumping. If I tell you, I'm a I'm a tie this all together, but I'm like the laziest guy now because I started out pumping. I'm talking about I'm working, and it reminds you, right? I was working in a retirement home. So to give my food, bring it all back together, right? Uh, 2011, I graduated high school, right? I went straight to college with the Penn State Abington, right? A lot of people, I don't knock college, but it wasn't for me. They actually kicked me out. I got a 0.8 GPA. So that means I was getting all Fs in one day. I had a point. I was, I was doing everything up at school, which you wasn't supposed to be. Doing. Right, right. So um, they kicked me out. I remember he taught the dean or whoever he was, yeah, the dean. They pulled me into the office and they're like, look, listen, based on your academics, like, look, you just, this is not a good fit. So I'm like, all right. So they kicked me out and I went to community college. Got a little bit better, but still the same situation. So then I worked at a retirement home. I was making $10 an hour there doing dietary. So I was literally feeding old people. And that was my job. I wore a uniform. They made you wear like this fake tuxedo looking type of thing <laughs> with an apron and all that. And I was working there making $10 an hour and I was doing any and every shift possible. And the biggest thing, and this is what started my journey of trying to, like, yo, I'm worth more an hour. I remember it's like yesterday. So I worked seven to three feeding old people. Then I worked four to 10 doing um, dishwashing because you could switch switch shirts and go in the back and dishwash. Then in the wintertime, it was a heavy snowstorm back to back. I stayed overnight. And you, since the, uh, the elderly come out early, you got to shovel snow throughout the night. Like, mm. while the sho- snow is coming down, you got to shovel because they don't want no accident. Somebody slip and fall. Mm. You know, you 80, 70 years old, you slip, it might be a wreck. For sure. So now I'm working overnight shoveling. 
All right, let me tell you about this all-natural soap company called Urban Eden. Okay, listen, you've probably seen them everywhere. You might have seen them on episode 75 of the Social Proof Podcast. Really, really amazing. Sat down with the owners. If you're looking for an all-natural soap company, I need somebody you can trust. Go to urbaneden.com. Okay, listen, if you are dealing with like these skin issues like eczema, acne, psoriasis, dry skin, hyperpigmentation, you need Urban Eden, okay? We're going to throw away that commercial soap, all that stuff you see on the on the shelves. You need some stuff that's really, really all natural for your skin, okay? You know, we got different skin. Listen, and they're doing something special for social proofers. First time customers, if you go to UrbanEden.com, you'll get a free sample pack with your first order. Meaning you got like Three, four, well, four, I think it's four, yeah. You have four bars of soap to try to find out what you like before you actually commit to the whole bar, okay? So go to urbaneden.com. They believe in it so much to give you free stuff, okay? So urbaneden.com, H-E-R-B-N-E-D-E-N, it's right here, dot com. Use promo code social proof. Y'all know y'all gonna save some money, all right? Urban Eden, I stamped them. I use a soap. You're gonna love it, all right? Back to the episode. I remember two weeks. an my- hour. Well, you shovel, you made a little bit more because it's overnight. Mm. But I remember when I had uh, got my check two weeks, it was like $1,300. Mm. But remember, I was working seven to three in the morning and I was spending night at the job. I said, mm. yeah, nah, nah. I ain't never do no overnight shifts after that. And I just still did my seven to three shift. And then that's when I was like, I got to figure something out. I started out, I started selling clothes. Me and my partner, we had a clothing line. Mm. We was doing good at that, but it still wasn't my passion. That's when 2017, I got into the real estate thing. Gotcha. Failed my test a bunch of times, then finally passed it. And then March 2017, I got my license. And from there to December, I went ahead and um did like 16 deals, exactly 16 deals. It was more than that, but like a couple of them didn't go through because mm-hmm. you, you bought a car the day before, right. you bought the house, like some dumb stuff <laughs> right, like right, that. Right. So it would have been like 20-something, probably been like 26. Well, what, what were you doing to go get those deals. Exactly. So now what I was doing was I was using social media. So I was literally putting, I was doing posts. Like let's say, for example, uh, so this is funny, right? My whole following is like 70% women. So I knew that, right? So you can look at the insights, look at the analytics. So now I don't want to be biased, but what do women like? They like nice kitchens. They like nice bathrooms, things like that. So I started posting was it kitchens. The new, was the newfound beard that got you on the... Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> it could have been but a beard. Literally, yeah. all, if you, when I look back at 2017, all my closings was like, if I had 16 closings, it was like 14 women. Dang. Yeah, all of them was women. So now, all my DMs is women. Mm-hmm. So now, I, because I'm posting kitchens, I'm posting bathrooms, I'm like, yo, women are crushing it. All this type of stuff. Women coming in. And they just like, I want to buy a house. I want to buy a house. I want to utilize you. And then what I realized, right, about women, and I don't want to sound sexist or nothing like that, what I realized is a lot of times, and one of my mentors said, figure out what is your ideal client. So I said, I went and looked at that, and I said, you know what? My ideal client is a single woman, has over $10,000 saved, and they just ready to just to go. They just ready to buy something, right? And I realized that because... Now, when you have, when a girl or a woman has a, has a boyfriend or husband, he has all the say-so, or somewhat has all the say-so. And I realized that a lot of these dudes wouldn't even come look at the houses. A lot of dudes wouldn't even want to be involved. But now she trying to figure out, FaceTime me, if he said he don't like it, it's over with. Mm. So then I really trying to target it more to that. And it was like, because now they're looking like, okay, I still want a, a male figure to kind of like take charge I see. And I became that male figure. So I now see. I'm like, I think this is a good spot. And they're like, if you say it's good, it's a good. Yeah. And I wasn't just trying to say it. It literally was like, I think that's a bad one. I think this is a good one. And that's how I really started running up like that's that. That's lit. That's lit. Yes. So I knew exactly what my what my audience was. Yeah, bro. I, man, I be trying to tell people, bro. You got to know, gotta who know you're your audience. To. Yeah, you got to know who you're talking to. Because some people like, yo, anybody that wants to buy a house. But if you don't, like, I think you're going to catch the type of bait that you put out. Mm-hmm. Like whatever whatever bait you put out, that's the fish that you're gonna catch. Mm-hmm. And because people are putting out so much different bait, they're getting bites everywhere. But I can't necessarily tie you to, yo, this is my hero. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? This is my this is the person that's always talking to me. Yeah. And it's really hard to grow a following that way. It's really it's hard to build hard. a business that way. It's super. It's actually come with impossible if you don't really understand who your audience is and who you're talking to. So that's how I utilize that. As far as me, you know, targeting people on social media and also the backing about it is mm-hmm. a lot of people, as far as whatever business you do, I don't care if it's real estate, selling hair, selling clothes, 
selling sneakers, whatever it is you do, you need to target your friends and family first. Really? I keep telling people that. Yo, look, listen, right? You got a, you, you got a, you had a clothing, you still got a clothing line? Yeah. So what we did was when I first started my clothing line was with my partner, I text all my friends and family first. Hey, look, I got the shirt. You should buy it. They're going to buy it because they want to support you. Mm-hmm. You post all them pictures on the gram. Yeah. They're going to like, dang, this thing is jumping. Like, I need, I, I feel like I'm out of something. I'm missing something. Mm-hmm. I did the same thing with houses. I text all my friends and family, reach out to them. Like, four deals, five deals was mm-hmm. like literally my cousins, my friends. And you'd be surprised how legit people are. One of my cousins, ratchet. I'm talking about like literally, <laughs> we was, she was arguing at the closing table. And I was so embarrassed, but I'm talking about seven something credit score, paperwork, all that was in order. Everything was legit. Mm. So you'd be surprised who you talk to or who you scared to talk to that's actually about to make you your next check. Mm. So if you target your friends and family who already are comfortable with you, and if you already a hard worker all your life, they're going to be like, well, I'm, if he's hard working that, he's going to be hard working in this. So they'll trust you. So now. I think it's easy. Obviously, it's the, the path of. Uh, least resistance. I mean, mm-hmm. it could be the path of most resistance, but the reason I tell people, for sure, you need to reach out to them because that's mm-hmm. who you can touch. But don't be, um, don't be tied to the outcome of that. Oh, yeah. Because if your friends and family don't buy, you're so depressed and yeah, you're like, oh, you I think they're supposed to buy. But, yo, know, my, I, I don't, I don't target, and maybe it's now, I don't target my friends and family because I expect them not to buy from me. True, true. And I had to change my mindset because every time I launch a product or I'm selling something, I'm trying to get them to buy from me. Mm -hmm. And then I get upset and then I take their opinion on why I should or shouldn't be doing this. And I was really, I was getting mad at them, but I should have been mad at myself for not being able to sell to the other 7 billion people in the world. Yeah. You got to be I mean? reaching out to everybody 100%, and including 100%. them. A lot of people are and only reaching on your out friends to them. And family yeah. to get it out the way, but don't be emotionally exactly. tied to Exactly. I'm like, I'm shooting the shot. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah. If it does work, great. Now I got a live testimonial. But mm-hmm. a lot of, what a lot of people's problem is they scared to look like the newbie. Facts. Everybody's scared to look like the newbie, right? I'm scared to talk to my friend or my family member or my cousin, whoever, because they know I just got started yesterday. Yeah. Where I can pump fake to this person over here and they think I've been doing this for five <laughs> or ten years. Right, right. Well, the thing is, if you've been a hard worker all your life, right, and you sell to your friends and your family, they're already like, yo, this dude been hustling since day one, so I'm pretty sure he's going to be good at this too. Yeah. Let me give him a shot, right? And then there you can utilize that as, uh, I don't say guinea pig, but just to get the ball rolling. So then when you get to the random person, you're already an expert almost because yeah. you already went through those processes already. That's and that's how I got started. So I was using social media and I was utilizing the people that already trusted me as a human being first. And then I just just added some extra sauce to get them to trust me as real estate. And then that's how we kind of got ran through 2017. Wow. So twenty. So the, the very next year, what, it was 2018? 2018, I said... Your, your man make 30 grand and you're like, what's that? Right. Yeah, I said, we. He, I'm like, you do real estate too? He's like, yeah, and that's how we do it. So, because 2017, I was running. Remember, I still, I didn't quit my job right at the gate. So, I literally got up at 4 in the morning researching stuff, presetting text messages. So, at 8 a.m., I'm sending, say you want to buy us. At pre, at, I'm presetting the text at, seven, at 4 in the morning. At 8 o'clock, I creep off to the bathroom. Send all those messages. Because, you know, when you want an iPhone, the messages don't delete. You right, just go right. back to the thread. Mm. Send all those messages. Hey, let me know. I'm going in a meeting for a couple hours, so I'll call you back a little later. Just let me know. <laughs> At 2 o'clock. Everybody's going to what... change a bedpan or something weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Real time. <laughs> then... And when I clock out at 3 o'clock, I just change my clothes and I'm doing house stuff all the way till 10 o'clock at night. And um, and then one of the things that messed me up was my wife, my girlfriend at the time, she was like, yo, like, you really nonstop every day of the week. Mm. And then one of the things was, it was Easter Sunday and everybody was, all the family was together eating dinner. And I was like, yo, I'm out here just doing this house stuff. This ain't cool. Like, it's not, so I'm working from literally 4 a.m. to 10 o'clock at night, seven days straight. Mm. So that's when 2018 hit. And I said, I got to switch gears. I took Sundays off. And then I met my homie, my friend. 
And he said, yo, I did this and I made 30 grand. I'm like, all right, how? Because I'm working just as hard as you and these deals is seven, eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000, right? And that's when he showed me the wholesale model. He showed me that setup and that's when it just went off from there. And I really, I connected with two other individuals on my team, right? And I said, look, every deal I get, I'm referring it. I don't even want the deals anymore. I'm focusing on this. So I literally um, still did a couple of deals, right? It was 2019 when I really went 100%. I don't want it. Like, if it comes to me, I don't, I don't even want to touch it. But 2018, I still was picking and choosing the ones that I really liked and stuff like that. Then I started really just referring everything out. Now I'm a referral guy. Like, I don't, everything is just referred out. Just give me 50% and so refer it out. not selling any houses? No, no, hell no. Hell no. Hell no. I probably helped probably literally like 500 people right now make money every day, every month. Every, because I get leads all the time still. Like, because my name in Philly, like a lot, I don't say everybody knows me, but I got a lot of people that knows me in Philly. Mm. So now everybody called me, I saw my boss. Hey, like early, right before we got here, somebody still called me, hey, you, hey, I want, hey, look, text this person. They're going to help you out. They're going to connect you. And then boom, I just get 50% of that. Yeah, so, so do you be getting like those, those uh, like probate deals and people that's get, behind W2s and all that? We get everything. In Philly. We get everything. Yo, give me a W2, bro. I guess you whatever. You got some W two. You think some some stuff be coming across your desk like every W2? yo. Listen, you not W two subject to. Yeah, I know. I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. You want you want to know my problem is right now, and I'm about to share. I'm gonna share some game in here that my mentees will probably hate. And I told them, I said, yo, because we do coaching calls every Wednesday, mm-hmm. eight o'clock. I said I can't because I don't know how long this is gonna go. Right. So let's just push it back to Thursday. And it was like, yo, you about to give them some stuff. And I said, you know what? They're going to be upset. But I said, I'm going to give on this, on today, I'm going to give so much game that people probably never even heard of. Because I know 90% of people are not going to use it. Right. 90% of the people that watch this not going to utilize this. No, Not even realizing that I'm about to show people how to make extra $100,000 this year with less than $1,000 out of their pocket. Well, let's do it. Let's, let, let's start right, right. now. Let's so, go. all right, bet. So, my problem today is I have too many houses that I can buy. Like, so when you say I can, you need a deal, I can get you one. Your problem is you have too many houses that you can buy. Yeah, because we get so many deals, mm. right? Utilizing the systems that I'm about to break down. And that's what I want people to start realizing, understanding how to set up options for yourself, right? So you want to get in the real, you are in real estate, right? You are in real estate. I got a few. Right, so what's your biggest problem right now in like scaling up in real estate? Well, I don't know. I'm not like heavy in real. So I I got a commercial building and I have nice. three units in Louisiana, and they're managing it. It's fully, mm-hmm. um, fully occupied. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I guess the scale is finding some real cheap property that I can use right here in Atlanta. Exactly. That's people' problem. One is money, obviously, and two, nobody knows how to find any properties. That's the biggest problem for everybody. So. My problem is I have too many houses to buy because we literally know how to find them nonstop, easy, every single day. So I'm going to give give some game real quick. If somebody wants to get a deal literally right now and it barely doesn't cost them any money out of pocket, you know how when a, a realtor puts a for sale sign up front, they mm-hmm. put it as, hey, house is for sale, mm-hmm. and they have a contract, six months or 12 months to buy the house, right? Sell the house. Mm-hmm. If they don't sell it, it turns into an expired listing, a failed listing. The realtor right. tried to sell it, it failed, it expired. So let me ask you this. If you were trying to sell your house for 12 months and it didn't sell, for 12 months, you've been trying to sell this house for 12 months, the realtor tried to sell it and it could not sell. And I come for $100,000 and I come to you and I say, look, I got 65, 70 grand for you. Would you consider it? Of course. Also on top of that, I tell you, hey, look, listen, going through me, you don't have to pay realtor commissions. Mm -hmm. Going through me, you don't have to pay transfer taxes. So now you're really not even taking the thirty thirty five thousand dollars loss because I'm cutting out all the fees that you was going to pay anyway. So if people want to get a deal like today, like literally today, all you got to do is you can go to you can reach out to a realtor to give them a list of expires, or you can use utilize a system that I use called PropStream, and uh-huh. there you can literally go ahead and search a zip code or several zip codes, all expire listings or they call them failed listings. You have it on your phone? What PropStream? Prop yeah, that's it. Yo, let's look at a play. Look at this area right here, Chambly. And I want to know: Are there some? Oh, the expired? signal here crazy is it? right now. Yeah, 
Oh yeah, Joe. Yeah, let's let's get on the crazy. internet real quick. Cause so I want I want to I want to see it, bro. Like I gotta I gotta see it. I want to like cause I be hearing about the prop stream joint, and I just never. Uh, nobody can show it to me. You know what I mean? Like I want to see like some spots in this area, because my goal is. You know, we got event space here, and mm-hmm. I actually build another event space right now. Nice. So literally a- across the street. Oh, so I nice. want to get some Airbnb in this area because when people come in town, where are you going to stay? Yeah. Right by the event that you're going to have. So exactly. I would have no problem getting that joint rented out. But like I said, that's the problem. I need a- Finding the stuff is exactly. the problem people always have. So that's how we set up. We do uh, event space as well, too. Thanks to Neil. You got a, you got a space? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I use that space to retire my mom. She went to do event space before event space probably didn't think. Venue hall. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. So I went ahead and utilize, utilizing a real estate model. Got her two places, and that thing just be going off. Word. All right. Yeah, so yeah. so she got you got the uh, internet. Show me, yo, show me the prop stream. What is this zip code, Joe? 30341. 30341. It's not 14. 30341. Okay. I don't know why I would ask you, give me an answer, then I question your answer. I apologize. <laughs> I apologize. So all right, let me see. Pull, pull it up real quick. Let me see the prop. Hold on, I'm about to log in real Okay. Quick. And you'll find anywhere in the in the anywhere country. in the world. Anywhere in the world. So you don't use Zillow? Nah. I'll be on Zillow so I'll figure nah. it out. Well, actually, if you want to utilize that stuff like that, you can go ahead to Realtor.com. Realtor.com is better. Than Zillow? Realtor.com is better than Zillow. But do it give you all that tax information and all that on Realtor.com? Well, the tax information, a little bit, but if you in your county, you can go ahead and look up the taxes. All that stuff, public record. Okay, got you. Yeah, and then also, right, even if for you, right, let's say, so prop stream is $100 a month. If you go to EndlessProps.com, EndlessProps.com, you get a free trial so you can use it for a week and just play with it. So I thought I'd show you this. Give me a zip code real fast. Uh, 303 what? 41? 30341. Georgia. Yeah. And it shows... Okay. See the whole map? We can, okay. And we got over 9,000 properties that came up, right? Dang! Just like that, over 9,000 properties came up. So then we get this filters tab right here. Right. And then you can go ahead and play with this MLS status. You see MLS status right here? Mm-hmm. Fail. So you go you go for the fail. That means they tried to sell it and couldn't. It couldn't. Which means they, they're a little they, more... They pissed off. They... You trying to sell out for 12 months. Let's say, for example, you still got a mortgage and you're paying $500 to $1,000 every month for 12 behind. months. You might be behind or you just might be pissed off on top of that. You're paying a utility bill every single month on top of that mm. because you want to make sure at least the lecture going with people coming in. All this stuff been going on for 12 months and you ain't making no money. That's crazy. I didn't even think it was 9,000 houses. 9,000 right. came up, see, right? So got. now, right... Say under 200,000. And now 198 properties, literally 198 properties came up right there. That's all failed. All these are failed. All of them failed. So if you wanted to, right, you could reach out to all every... 181, this this joint around the corner. You can have that. So on Peachtree Road, I can have that. I like how you be talking. You can have that. He said, you can have that joint. You can have that. Imagine you reach out to every single one of them. Let's do the let's do the the math. Like imagine you reach out to 181 people. You you mean to tell me ain't at least one of them gonna say, all right, I'm cool with that. You do that every single day. What you think gonna happen? So how do you know how much they try to sell it for? Let's Yo, say. this got the loan balance on there and everything? Everything. Is that accurate? Accurate. Well, the loan balance is not gonna be like to specific. But it's close. Because you still gotta get payoff and stuff like that. But yeah. Because if you try to sell a house today, you still wanna get a, a mortgage payoff. It has to be updated to the month that you're selling it. So let's say, for example, you're selling it. it's close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you can go on there and you can see how much, uh, around about how much my own house. Look, I'm about to show you something. Which really helps because I know you ain't, I know y'all got no, Look, I know y'all. The owner's name is Susan. She bought this, this house is three beds, three and a half bath, 2,400 square feet, right? You got all the public information. You got that, look, MLS details right here. MLS multiple listing service, right? She tried to sell this for 468 
right? And it's been on the market for 251 days. Yeah, yeah she's doing too much. Yeah, she's doing too much. You got the <laughs> details. When it was listed, she changing realtors, all this type of stuff. She's been trying to sell this thing. It ain't selling. It's frustrating. You come in at 400. Nut, though, because she, look, she's... And she, you can see that she changed realtors. You see everything. She probably super stuck on that price, and mm-hmm. it, ain't, it ain't worth it. Yeah, but now, but you can put that in your follow. And then the she's probably considering that six percent. And if you can come to her with less than that six percent, let's look at this. Right, let's look at this. Let's say she went to sell it for four sixty. Let's say you come in at four hundred thousand. Four hundred thousand times six percent is twenty four thousand dollars. So as you she like that, I'm taking a sixty thousand dollar loss. Really, she's taking like a thirty six or forty thousand dollar loss mm. because you already taking twenty some thousand out. And also, if you cover the transfer tax and things like that, she taking it's not even as big as a loss she think. Mm. The reason why people upsell their properties because they want to cover the transfer taxes, realtor fees, sellers assist, all those different types of things like that. But if you come at them like we ain't got to worry about none of that, you could literally do this every single day. You get to do every day. This is how I really... So when I first got started, right, me and my partner, we were looking envelopes, typing it, putting, typing up letters saying, hey, I want to buy your house, X, Y, and Z. So one of the things you can do is called driving for dollars. Mm-hmm. You're driving around the neighborhood writing down all your addresses. Right. Me and my partner really used to do that every Sunday, 8 o'clock in the morning. Start stuffing letters, you know, send them on the mail. Those stamps is expensive, right? So then after doing that a while, we, we closed some deals, but you realize like, those, this is taking some time and this is a lot of money. So then I started getting into, like, how can I make this a lot easier? Like, I told you, I'm lazy. Like, I'm trying to... I get lazy over the years because you just learn how to do things a lot better mm. and fast and easier going around. I said, you know, let me try this expired listing thing. Boom. Lady texting back. She said, y'all yeah, take it. All through the text message. Mm. And I didn't even show you that the pictures of the house is already up. You don't have to go look at it. You don't have to do anything. You got the number. You got the number they bought it for. What year they bought it for how much they paid for it, how, what the realtor's name that they used, that he was using. You got all the details and all the pictures. They got 50 pictures up there. Why do you need to come check the house out? You just make mm. it less than what it was. And you do this every single day from Yo, home. That's crazy. You literally do this every single day from home. I, for, my first time ever doing this, I was like, this can't be this easy. I'm texting a lady. <laughs> I'm texting a lady. She said she won $50,000 for this house, right? I said, all right, look, I'm going to shoot at 30. She said, nah, nah. I said, look, miss, uh, the best I can do is 30 because of the market. And one of the things that people always do is, and I understand this because you're a stranger to them, is a lot of people are cocky. A lot of wholesalers, a lot of real estate individuals just cocky. I don't know because you make money, you like a little head strong. I, I don't know, right? But the biggest thing that people don't do is say why. So somebody call you and they say, I want to buy your house. They're like, yo, I'll give you 50000 for it. And you say no, and you just like trying to, ah, I'm not doing it. But what we do is, hey, look, listen, the best I can do is you want, uh, you want $100,000. The best I can do is $50,000. And here's why. That why changes everything because now it's like nobody ever says they usually just shoot it out there and just say, take it or leave it. I'm calling you, I'm harassing you. At least I could do is owe you the respect of telling you why I'm a low boy, mm-hmm. you. Hey, look, the best I can do is $50,000. And here's why. I understand that you want $100,000. I know you understand you want $110,000 for your house. But properties are going for like 120, 130 around that area, right? Well, you already told me the house is a little up, a little dated. The kitchen is pink, the bat, the uh, the kitchen is pink, the bathroom is pink, the carpet is pink, all this old stuff, right? Mm. So now, with that being said, a lot of these houses selling for 130 are updated, hardwood floors, stainless steel appliances. So I might have to put some money into it to get it up to that. And you want me to pay the same price or ten thousand dollars less as the updated houses? Oh, you kind of got a point. That's an extra five minutes on the phone. Mm. But you explain it why. So then the number starts going down, right? I like to call it the price versus value approach. Remember, any people prices can go up and down once you add value and information to it. Mm. The more value and information I give a person affects the price of the product. You give me information about the shirt you're wearing, and you tell me what it stands for, uh, dang, it's worth $50 now. Yeah. So now if I give you information about a house, like, yo, this is what's selling. And what a lot of people don't understand is just because they own a house does not mean they know more about real estate than you, right? Mm, So, yeah, people inherited a house. People Mm. bought the house 30, 40 years ago. Everything is different these days. In a real life situation, like a a, a negotiation that you remember, like they started high, 
and you you got it for where you wanted it. Uh, this guy he wanted two hundred. He wanted two hundred and six. He wanted two hundred and seventy five thousand dollars for his house. I got it down to like one sixty. I got it to like one sixty two or something like that. Yeah, he wanted two seventy five. Mm-hmm. And you got it for one sixty two. Yep. How? So first and foremost is you build rapport, saying that why, telling them exactly what's going on. And then the one thing that a lot of people don't do is they say whole numbers. You see, I said 162. A lot of people start out with, okay, I'm going to give you a $100,000 flat. If I call you right now and I say, look, listen, I want to buy your business for, from you for um, a million flat, right? It sounds like BS. Like, yeah. where'd you get a million from? Yeah. All right, look, the best I can do, is always do a funny number. The best I can do is 162500 <laughs> Where did that come from? Well, you know, HVAC, roof, you got, and it's like, yo, this dude really did his math a little bit. So Ness already gives you cool points right there because Ness are like, okay, I can't BS this guy. I can't. You didn't I, feel no type of way going down a hundred and something thousand dollars, bro? Well, I would be mad. I'll be nervous. Well, worst thing they're gonna say is worst thing they're gonna say is no. Well, I ain't getting this to be a social worker. <laughs> The worst thing they're gonna say is the worst thing they're gonna say is no. And then the second thing about it, 275 was already high. 275 was already high. So he was shooting for the moon. But also you gotta realize, ask people, why do you want it? What are you planning on doing when you get that 275? What are you, why are you selling your house? And then you realize that a lot of people are selling their house for 275 because the house there in Georgia they want to buy is 275. They trying to swap out. This doesn't real estate don't work out like that, right? The numbers are different. $270,000 $270,000 back in Philly might be a big difference, 275 down here. Y'all getting yeah. land and all types of stuff mm-hmm. like that. So you understand that. And once you kind of break that and under- let them understand like, hey, this is not a real swap out type of thing. You are, you just really chiseling it off more and more and more and more. And next you know, it's go from 275 to 250 to 200 to 180. And then just cheap. And then a lot of times you might not do it on the first run. You follow up in a couple of days they realized like they got time to sit on it and think about it. Like, dang, this two seventy five really not gonna work. Also, on top of that, you're not the only person calling them. Right. Don't even think you're cool enough to be the only person calling them. The whole world is calling them. But you start realizing if they entertaining your offer, that means they sent that they 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 talking to you and they sit that the number out to you confidently. They sit that to a couple other people. Mm. So, um, Mr. Shans, it's uh, safe to say you got a couple other people you talked to already, right? Yeah, I talked to a couple people. Everybody want to buy my house. All right. Um, what number did you tell them 275 to? Y'all told everybody 275. Said anybody bite on that? Like, nah, yeah, well, yeah, one person did. I'm like, why are we? I'm not going to lie to you. 275 is a, is a great deal. You should call them back and hang up with me and call them back. Right, <laughs> right. Well, you know, uh, they're not getting that number. Mm. So you start utilizing all those things and that's how you start bringing them down. It's a, it's like a five-punch combo. Where you learn all this stuff? Trial and error. Just trying to figure it you out. You always Mental naturally shit. good at sales, though? I've been selling since I was a kid. Mm. I've been So when I was a kid, I was selling candy. I was selling waters. I cut grass. I was selling tasty cakes in the classroom. Mm. I, sold, I probably sold... Happy and not happy about sold everything you single thing you right, think right, of. Right, yeah, right. so it's like it's like second nature. All right. And then also, um, I read this book called Pitch Anything by Oren Claff. Pitch anything. Pitch anything is so what people have two different sides of their brain. They have like this neurological side and they have what they call a crocodile side. So the main thing you want to do is not hit the crocodile side because crocodiles they end up going to defense mode. So if mm. I say something to you and say, look, listen, you want to say yours, you want to say yours for Two hundred thousand dollars, and I say a hundred. Instantly, you in defense mode. I'm saying something that's kind of disrespectful. It's throwing you off. You burnt out. You ready to hang up. So now I'm saying things that's going to allow to hit the other side of the brain. So one thing that you guys can do, as people that's watching, when you cold calling somebody, is start out with the person's name. You have all the information already there. So for example, I'm not going to say, "Hey, can I speak to David?" First thing you're going to do is, "Who is this?" You going to hang up. Mm-hmm. Hey, David, how you doing today? Um, I'm good. Who is this? Okay. Oh, my name is Derek. I'm a real estate investor. I see your property and you go from there. But you bought more time and then you kind of hit that other side of the brain because they trying to figure out who this is mm. without going to defense mode. You sound like a bill collector instantly. You like, I'm right. not cutting no, I'm not paying no money right now. Right. <laughs> and that's how you kind of like utilize all these different tactics to get your deals, 
And then the best thing I was telling you to find your deal is utilizing. I like going straight to the source. I'm going straight to the people that already kind of want to sell their house. So we use like the expired listings method. Um, we go after. I like that. I want to play on your app for like after <laughs> this is over. I just want to like just look and see what's going on in the streets. Yeah, you really utilize this. I shoot, I get log in and all that. You can play with it. No, that's crazy, bro. Yeah. All right, give me, give me one more hack. One more hack. So one thing that I like to do is when you're on, so you're on prop stream. That's the uh, the system I was telling you guys, right? When you go on prop stream, you can literally type in the years of ownership. So if I type, with a lot of people don't do this, right? They go after, they'll just go to a prop stream and they'll just type in, hey, I'm looking for houses in this zip code, right? So what I do is I'll go like 10 years ownership, eight years ownership. Somebody that owned a house for some time now, a lot of times you might find a house or 15 years ownership. I'm going after somebody that had this house for a minute. They probably got some wear and tear. They probably tired of it. The kids probably grown and left. I'm going after the older people right out the gate, people that have been and had this house for a long time. Mm. And that's the one way we kind of like get deals is by going after directly people that had that house for a minute and they probably want to get rid of it anyway. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, so I, I, I definitely want to um, hear about your, your mentorship. So what, what, is, what does it involve? So my mentorship program is you get, right out the gate, you get two courses, right? And I'm always, every year I'm doing a new course, right? Mm -hmm. So what that means is we got wholesale, it's called Wholesale Seekers Elite, right? Mm -hmm. So we got Wholesale Seekers Elite 1, and then we got Wholesale Seekers Elite 2.0, and I'm working on 3.0 right now. And that's specifically for the mentees. So they get updated information every, get the new, every six months, we're giving out new information because I'm learning something new all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm paying for mentorship, I'm paying for classes. I'm going to other real estate events paying, I literally paid $5,000 for one Zoom call just to get some games, some cutting edge mm -hmm. stuff. And I learned it and I give it back to the mentees, right? So now they're getting updated information as I'm getting it, right? So that's first and foremost you get. That's what you can learn in between time. Then on top of that, you get the contracts, you get the scripts, you get the program, you get every single thing you need. You get a whole kit. Then on top of that, we have uh, a private Facebook community where other people are doing deals, other people are new, other people are vets, and we're sharing deals. I'm, I literally, like I told you, I'm a referral guy. I'm sending deals to the mentees and they're like, hey, I get deals in other states. In other cities, I'm saying, hey, you close it out. Just you know, give me a little bit back if you want. Or sometimes I just give it to them, right? Mm -hmm. it's like, you can just have it. I see That's that dope. you're trying. You're trying to put something together. You can just have it. Don't even worry about it. Just give me a shout out or something, right? Yeah. And then on top of that, the final touch is we do weekly coaching calls every single Wednesday, 8 o'clock sharp. I have not missed one yet. Weekly you're on coaching a, calls. You're on a Zoom call with me. Yep. 8 p.m. sharp. Everybody's unmuted. Mm -hmm. And I'm literally teaching something new every single week. And people ask, like, how do you learn something new every single week? Well, because I'm actually, like, still doing this stuff actively. So I literally might tell you a story that happened today and how I overcame it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so, for example, I had a guy that wanted to back out his contract. And he was like, well, I don't want to sell my house no more because he saw how much he really was going to get after he paid his mortgage and mm -hmm. his water bill and stuff like that. And you could do something called a Liz Pendants, right? So that means I'm basically putting a lien on the house, basically. He can't sell the house to anybody else while we're going through right. this process. But what people don't even realize is if you send that text to somebody, that scares the crap out of them. Look, listen, you know, I'm sorry we weren't able to put this together. Um, what I'm going to do is my lawyer is going to be in contact with you from here on. We're starting a list pendants process. Whoa, wait, wait. Whoa, what's going on? Mm. All right, look, listen. All right, I sell the house. So I'm talking about process, things like that. So every week, there's something new to talk about because I'm actually going through a different scenario streets, every yeah. single day. And then also, we do role play. We do script practice. And sometimes I'm on a call to midnight. And because I allow my mentees to jump on and share their deals, and I'm going to analyze it. So, hey, look, that's a good one. Keep it going. Call them back tomorrow. Get that contract mm -hmm. signed. Or like, no, it's not a good deal. You should, um, you should change that. Gotcha. gotcha. And we're doing that every single week, every Wednesday. Besides this Wednesday, because today is Wednesday, yeah. but we're doing it tomorrow. That's dope, man. Yeah, so. That's absolutely amazing. Yeah, people will tell me all the time, like, yo, you're kind of doing too much. Yeah. But my thing is, I want to make sure that people win. That's my biggest thing. Like, make, because, like, for me, when I first got started, when I was young, so I didn't have nobody my age was doing stuff like this. And then, two, I understand how it feels to be the only person that's passionate about something. And you can't find nobody else's passion. I'm pretty sure when you got started, you like, yo, I just want to vent to somebody about this. Like, yo, this person hung up on me. I want to vent to somebody about this. And you could talk to your girlfriend, you talk to your wife, you talk to your mom. 
but they, they're only going to get it to an extent because they love you. They're not going to get it to the extent because they actually really care about it. I, I can go ahead and tell you, like, we become best friends. I can tell you about something. You get it because you're like, yo, that's my man. I, I'm passionate because he's passionate, but I don't really care about that outside of that. So being in a group, like a Facebook community or me just taking the time to talk to somebody because they might, like, you literally, it's hard out here. Yeah. It's hard being an entrepreneur, especially in real estate, calling people all day long to get them to go ahead and sell their house. Then I go ahead and tell people the second level about it is start utilizing, which I'm pretty sure you utilizing now, is virtual assistants. Not yet. I can't. Well, I, we got one oh, for this man. space. But I mean, for, for what I'm doing, one, I, I need to learn how to communicate with virtual assistants. Mm -hmm. But two, for what I'm doing, I don't know. It hasn't been like super pressing. Right. So, um, yeah, it might. You got to... You can fill a void in your business with a virtual assistant for something. Yeah, and then maybe I had the wrong person. I had somebody uh, doing, like, so, um, it was like commenting, but, like, the way they were, like, commenting on my social channel, it didn't even make sense, like, what you were saying as a reply to the person. You, uh, you have a, you have a use them for, like, DMs? Mm -mm. So you can get your virtual assistant to DM every single person that follow you. Do you have somebody that does that? Hmm? They DM every single person that follows. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? What? Oh, hey, like, hey, like, start the conversation, get this, get everything rolling. Hey, what's up? My name is Derek. I appreciate you for following me. Here's some stuff that you can have. Like, here's a free, you know, YouTube video I did. Here's, you know, stuff like that. Hmm. So then it starts the conversation. And if I want, I could jump in and finish here where they virtual assistant just keeps it going. That's dope. So you had a virtual assistant do that, and now that builds up engagement and stuff like that. How much you pay your VA? Two hundred dollars a week, and they be working hard too. Though. Eight hours a day, and then also that's just that, just the engagement. The real thing is, we use virtual assistants to go ahead and call people all day long and text people all day long. So I don't call people, I don't text people no more. I don't do none of that stuff. Virtual assistants get on the phone at ten a.m. sharp, and they call at six o'clock at night all day long. And mm. they send me the deals that are hot. And if I want to, I jump on those phone calls because they already said they want to sell it. They want to sell it for this price and they're ready to sell it right now if I got the check ready. So now instead of making 300 to 400 calls a day, which is what they'll do, I'm making five to 10 phone calls a day talking to the people that are like... That are already ready. They're really ready to go. Derek, you lit, bro. So that's how I you guys... I see why so you're running the bag up so fast. Just trying to leverage and... Get inside knowledge to figure out a way to not utilize all your time or the stuff. Like stuff going on right this second. Right. Matter of fact. That thing is you're you work really hard and you're really smart. I appreciate that. That's 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 real. And why you look for that, I gotta do a commercial anyway. Um, I gotta pay some bills. You know what I mean? Right. Stuff ain't free. You gotta pay Jovan, you know what I mean? What's today's date? You eat a lot. What? What's today's date? 20. No, All I can't right. say the date. Oh, well, look, that's today's right date, date right? Mm -hmm. On 11th Street, back in Philadelphia. They want to sell the price, sell the house. She lives in Florida. She's too old for the property. Damn. All the details. The, you got leads every day coming in. That's just now. It just happened. Virtual assistant did that. So when I get off here, I'll call them. Or I'll text them and say, hey, you finish it up. That's live. You seen the date. Like, that was That's a super fact. live. You like, gonna be look. super rich, bro. Trying. <laughs> you gonna be Trying. super rich, bro. But, uh, yeah. So let, let, let me, let me just, do this commercial real quick, man. This episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup, themorningmeetup.com, themorningmeetup.com, the only organization that gathers every single day for the betterment of entrepreneurship. I know you do your call uh, once a week, right? Yep, I'm on this call every day, bro. Every morning for I an hour. I need to step it up. Every day. All right, I step Every it up. Every day. I step it up. No, bro, you're going to drive yourself crazy. You work too hard. No, but I'm on for an hour. You on until midnight, bro. Oh, yeah, That's... we might be on at minimum two hours. And it's at very targeted. So, no, nah, it's, it, 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 it's an amazing uh, community for people who aren't entrepreneurs mm -hmm. or beginning entrepreneurs or people who need a community of other right. entrepreneurs. So, uh, go to themorningmeetup.com. Uh, it is a dollar trial just to see if it's going to help you. We got a book club. Mm -hmm. Got hundreds of people reading the same book. 
and we talk about it every morning. Like whatever we read that night, we we have, let's say we're all reading chapter six. The next day we discuss chapter six. That's a big accountability group. I like huge. that. I like that. Add like, that book in, uh, Pitch Anything by Oren Claff. I was just thinking about that. Pitch, yeah. That's a that's really a good book. It's all how about big is, how long is it? Um, is it like it's a, a regular book. I can't remember how many chapters. Not I read it like last We're reading a long ago. book right now. This joint. Harry it's Potter. Long, bro, right? You want it? That joint's super long. It's dope, though. But uh, all right, so pitch anything. So what we'll do is have a theme, probably. So th- for the theme, like we have a theme every month, and mm-hmm. that month might be sales. And every day, we're supporting the theme of the month. So a different okay. thing about sales, negotiation, conversation, okay. confidence, you know. Packaging. I don't know. But go to themorningmeetup.com, see where we're at uh, this month, and uh, just check us out for a dollar. Derek, thank you, man. This is lit. Oh, so how do we... Oh, so will you... Oh, for your your mentorship. Mm-hmm. I don't know how much it is, but can you give my audience a discount? Yeah. You can set up a promo code? Yeah. So I actually... Um, it's funny, right... I'm going to do two things. I'm going to do two things, right? So, one... All right. So, if you go to wholesalesocialproof.com... No, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. (laughs) If you go to wholesalesocialproof.com... So, I always going to give a discount. Oh, really? You already got it? Yeah, I was like, you know what? I really like what you guys are doing. You tuned into the show. I appreciate it. But look, this is what I'm going to do, right? So, the mentorship program, have everything to set up, Mm. accountability, coaching calls, everything is 4,000, right? Mm. I was taking five hundred dollars off. I like that, right? But that. because that was just off. And the how strength. long do they get to get in? How no, long? But listen in? to this, because you just asked me, and I respect a closed mouth. Closed mouth doesn't get fed. You ask. I'm gonna text my assistant right now to change it to two thousand dollars off. Really? Yeah. Uh, you're a stand. Two thousand. You're a stand up guy. It's about know? making sure people win. You yeah. know what I mean? I respect you because. I was already going to do it, but you asked. So his nails like, now I respect him for, because you didn't have to do that. And a lot of people might be scared to do that. So I respect mm-hmm. that. And then, you know what? I'm going to do Where's something else. Say no. You know what I, mean? I, learned, no. I learned that from there. That's what I'm saying. My <laughs> grandma used to say all the time. Worst thing somebody going to say is no. So also, right, give me a, um, give me a number one to 10. A number one to 10, nine, okay. maybe? Nine. All right. So look, let me text her right now. Nine. What's All right, nine? So, what, is, what is it? So I got an ebook, right? If somebody's like, listen, I don't want all the accountability. I, I'm just not ready for that much action. Because when you're in that, we're, we're locked in. Like, you're talking to me. We're locked, fully locked in. Mm-hmm. You're like, I want to try to do it myself and figure it out. I got an ebook that teaches you how to sell, right? It's $47. You said nine, right? Mm-hmm. All right. So I just text her. If you text... Shane's. Listen, Shane's, right? Shane's. But if social text, proof, if it's a text, just do social proof. It's easier for everybody to remember. I already sent it in. She about to get it started. If you text Shane's to 74121, the book gonna be $9. Oh, really? Yeah, so you get two things. You get two things. What a good dude, man. That's all about good. just making I sure people you, win. Man. So now people can get, if you want to join into the actual mentorship, you got $2,000 off, go to wholesalesocialproof.com. And then if you text Shane's to 74121, I already texted her. She's going to change the book from $47 to $9. Ah, can't beat that, So man. everybody Listen. should be able to go ahead and do deals. <laughs> and then one last thing I want to leave people with, right? A little real estate hack is, if you guys understand the wholesale model on how to find deals like I showed you, you literally can start building generational wealth, right? So if you keep finding these Thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar deals, or whatever is cheap to people in their region. Now you can start wholesaling to yourself. Now I'm the end buyer. Now I'm buying these deals, right? So now imagine, imagine having a hundred properties paying fifteen hundred dollars a month. Imagine what that first of the month looks like. Mm. A lot of people' problem is they don't know how to find deals, to even get to that hundred number, right? So now if you know how to find your own deals, you can wholesale them to yourself. And then now you have your own properties at deep discounted prices that you can go ahead and sell to your, so you go ahead and renovate them and go ahead and rent them out. And also we show in the mentorship, this is a whole nother game, how to wholesale them to yourself and actually make money during the transaction. That's a whole, that's a, we're going to need another hour to talk about that one. Well, okay. We got like a, 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 um, a Patreon mm-hmm. where it's like an extra bonus little time. You mind getting into that real quick? 
after after this over? It'll be a few minutes. You got to... All right. All right, there we go. Right. See, All I don't right. know why I be playing in the All Patreon, right. man. They got to go to the patreon.com forward slash David Ever Sleeps, right. man. Just be a part of that. So... Derek, I appreciate you, man. We'll have all the links in the description um, so uh, uh, so people can can check it out and really rock with you, man. I think you are a very genuine person. Appreciate and you go, yo, bro, I, I just got a feeling you're going to be super duper successful. You already up, but you about to be some, you you want some game changing stuff, bro. Thank like you. some CEO that. running a company. Like there are entrepreneurs that know how to make money. Mm-hmm. And in all uh, transparency, I'm making the transition from a person who knows how to make money to running a company. It's two different things. Way yeah, two different. Two different things. Way different. It, people don't even understand the difference in between that, right? And being the person that's running, doing everyday, day-to-day things, and the person that's supervising, managing, without actually managing, and actually owning a company and having it run. So I was listening to something. They said there's a couple different tiers. I don't know exact tiers, how many, but it's imagination, then it's like manager, then it's like supervising his worker. Your job is to be the imagination person. You know, um, uh, what's the guy that made the iPhones? Don't kill me. Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. His job was to be imaginative. Mm. If that's a word. Make create iPhones yeah. in, his, in his brain. Pass it down to the next stage. Hey, I need you to supervise and manage the people that's going to be working to do the stuff. Mm. So our job is just to make come up with imaginative imagination type things, come with ideas, come up with systems, come up with all this different, different type of stuff. So now our virtual assistants, our staff, employees, fill it out and then we go and make the money from that. But also we creating jobs. So one of my main goals is to make sure all my friends and all my loved ones either work for me or work with me. Mm-hmm. So right now my mom, we got a business together, the event space. My brother works full time for me now. Wow. Just check. He's a property manager for me. Um, my sister, I'm about to go ahead and open up her own hair salon. Uh, my cousin. So my job is to make sure everybody is, we all eating together. When Neil say family business or no business. I love it. I love it. Next five to 10 years, where you see yourself, man? And be careful because we're going to watch this in five to 10 years to see if you was just talking or you was really about that life. Thousand units. Thousand Thousand units units and every single person, unless they really, really don't want to, and my family, my loved ones, all work under that same umbrella. Nobody has a job. Easy. But a thousand. Imagine paying somebody paying fifteen. The last apartment I rented, uh, we rented fifteen hundred dollars a month. Fifteen hundred dollars a month coming That's in from a thousand units. One point five. What's that? A thousand units times fifteen hundred dollars. That's what that one point five. What is that? A thousand. Oh yeah. That's one point five. Yeah. Yeah. One point five million on the first of the month. Every month, passive. You ain't really doing nothing for that. You got the staff. You got the team. You got everybody running it. Imagine that every first of the month. And it's easy because you know how to find your own deal to go and do that. Imagine it. Just, yeah, just like imagine me, $1.5 million right. on the first through the fifth every single month. What's up? I got rental properties now, so I like it. I don't even at 1.5 and I like it. <laughs> <laughs> so like, just imagine all my deals I found myself. I never went, you know how people do FHA mm-hmm. and VA and realtors. I never, I don't know what that feels like. I never did it before. I found all my stuff myself. Got you. That's lit. Look, man, I, I can't even... Look, I, I was going to ask you to close it out, but you... All right, just close it out with something else, man. Give me a bar. There's, if somebody's watching this that um that needs some inspiration, what would you say to that person? Um, Just focus on getting in the right rooms. Like, the main thing people can do, especially if you're at this piece, this phase where you don't know exactly where you want to go, just focus on getting in the right rooms. You know what's the right room and the wrong room. You know... Mm-hmm. Being in the club and all the different type of stuff. For some people, maybe, but for the average person, that's not like the right room to be in. You know, you got high-level thinkers, high-level entrepreneurs, high-level doctors, business people, whatever it is, get in those rooms and just be a fly on the wall. A fly on the wall will hear more things and get more game than a person with big ears sitting in the house just by themselves doing nothing. Mm-hmm. So imagine if, right, and I don't know, and I'm I'm gonna tread lightly, don't quote me for this, right? But you know Meek, right? Meek mm-hmm. Mill. Mm-hmm. So one thing I noticed is, right, he started hanging around, let's say, Michael Rubin, Robert Crabb, all these different next billionaires, right? We haven't heard no new music from him in a little while now. But he talks about all the time how he's making $20 million, $30 million, making all this real crazy money now, right? Well, probably because he's like in the right rooms, doing Liz deals, doing all these other type of deals. Just get in the right room. You're going to overhear something. If a billionaire... 
is making billions, you, you're pretty sure he got million dollar play just falling out the 100%. pocket. So if you just focus on getting in the right rooms, like a lot of times I get in rooms and I might sit and be, I open up my mouth when it's time to, but I sit quiet and just look, listen. I catch a lot of games just doing that. So just focus on getting the right rooms, whether it's physical, whether it's Zoom, a live call, whatever it is, just focus on getting in the rooms and you just gonna just look for that piece. Don't think about something that's gonna change your entire life in one move, that one piece to add to your already puzzle. That's a bar. Listen, we can't close it out no better than that. Do me a favor. Do yourself a favor. Make sure you go follow Mr. Boone here, man. Wealth and knowledge. Uh, and do, your fa- do, do, do yourself a favor. Get you some social proof. Go build something. But I need you to, like, remember how you did it and then come back to your community and teach them how you did it, okay? That's the only way our community grows, okay? We are out of here. Peace. What if I told you for $1, I will introduce you to hundreds of entrepreneurs every single morning this week from all across the country. You'll be able to talk to hundreds of entrepreneurs and I'll coach you. I'll coach you for a dollar this whole week. And I'll introduce you to some of my successful friends for a dollar this week. Would you... Would you take part in that? Well, go to themorningmeetup.com because that's exactly what we're doing here, okay? The only organization that gathers entrepreneurs every single day for the betterment of entrepreneurship, okay? Every single day, Monday through Friday, we gather, we're growing, we're learning. We got a book club. Have you ever seen hundreds of entrepreneurs reading the same book? Every single chapter, every single day, we're growing together, okay? You need the environment to grow in. Themorningmeetup.com, a dollar. I'm gonna give you all this for a dollar. If you wanna stay, Great. It's $79 a month after that. If not, no obligation. You can leave whenever you want. All right. Vmorningmeetup.com. I'll see you in the morning.